What's going on, y'all? If you didn't catch part one of my Argus Monitor Care video, I am going to go ahead and put that in the top right corner. So if you haven't seen that, go watch that one first and then come back to this video. I will also put it down in the description. And after I'm finished with this video, after it's posted and everything, I am going to go ahead and release another video of them in the same actual video so part one and part two will be kind of conjoined in, in a different video uh just in case you guys want to refer back to anything that is said beyond that i want to thank you guys for the support i got a lot of awesome comments on this video and i'm super happy that you guys are you know liking the content with that being said if you're not already subscribed make sure you go down there hit that subscribe button man we're on the road to 1000 and we're doing this trying to get the best information about these amazing animals that we know as monitors out to every single person i'm learning along with you guys this has been an amazing journey and i cannot wait so we're gonna go ahead and start with what i dare say you should decorate your monitor enclosure with but trust me your argus monitor will redecorate whatever you put in there to his liking so let's go ahead and get into enclosure furnishings so let's start at the bottom You'll want a deep layer of substrate. For babies, you can get away with a shallower area for the purpose of socialization, but these animals were born to dig, so do not deprive them of it. A good two to three foot layer of sandy soil substrate works best for adults. You ideally want it dry on top and moist the further you dig down, and packed down very good as well. It's gonna need to hold its shape for a burrow. You don't want this soil to be wet. You want it to just be moist the further you go down. I use a mix that consists of sand, topsoil, and a little bit of clay and leaf litter sprinkled in with a little bit of peat moss. All mixed in well and packed down for burrowing. Sandy soil works, and you can even do cypress mulch or reptile bark. Avoid pure sand or anything else that doesn't hold a burrow at least decently. The substrate holding a burrow is of utmost importance for females especially. In the wild, female Argus monitors dig intricate spiral-like nests several feet into the ground complete with multiple chambers and secret entrances. You may be saying, I have a female, but I'm not going to breed Argus monitors. Well, the fact is, even without a male, your female may still go through a reproductive event where she starts to build up and develop follicles and may eventually lay her eggs. These eggs will most likely not be fertile, but if she does not have a suitable nest site, there is a chance she may become egg bound, which usually ends in death. Per Crocdoc, this is the biggest killer of female monitors in captivity. Shout out to Croc Doc. I know I, I shouted him out last video, but shout out to Croc Doc 2 on YouTube. Guys, go check him out. Amazing, amazing content. So make sure to avoid this by providing your Argus monitor with large amounts of burrow holding substrate. Even if she hasn't been with a male, Argus monitors, along with other monitor species, can actually lay parthenogenic eggs, which are when there was no mating that took place, but the egg or eggs are still fertile. This is useful if a female was to get stranded away from other monitors, maybe on a different island or something. She could lay an egg and the egg would hatch out male. The newly hatched male would grow up and breed back to the mother and boom, now the island has a new sprouted population of Argus monitors. Uh, this is also very common with monitors like mangrove monitors, things in the Indicus complex, how they're all on different islands. They use this same tactic. I will say though, the chance of your lone female monitor laying a good partho egg is very slim, but it's never zero. So let's move on to water. Now this is a really fun one. Argus monitors are not known as semi-aquatic animals, like something like an Asian water monitor or a Merton's water monitor, but this does not mean that they don't like water. Remember, Argus monitors are quite riparian, especially in the northern parts of their range, and they're frequently found around or near sources of permanent water. I tend to look at my Argus monitor's tail a lot when I play with him. It's not totally flat like a Nile monitor, who has a flattened rudder-like tail to propel it through the water at decent speeds, but it is fairly compressed. And this, combined with the fact that they are so fond of water, may actually be something to tell of its nature. In fact, Argus monitors have actually been known to be found on rock outcroppings surrounded by water, and they'll even retreat to the water when threatened. They're even known to dive down into bodies of water to find freshwater mussels, which they then take back to the shore and eat. One thing is for certain, Argus monitors love to swim. My Argus monitor will swim every day. He's outgrown his water dish, so he'll be getting a bigger one soon, but he swims in it every day, and he makes that water dirty, so frequent cleaning is a must, especially if your monitor likes to poop in their water, which most of them do. Blue, unfortunately, does not, so cleaning his poop is not as easy, but... I guess that means that his water doesn't get contaminated as fast. While we're on the subject of poop, I suggest you spot clean daily or whenever they defecate, which is usually once a day around the exact same time, in my experience at least. Back on the subject of water, make sure you have a large enclosure so you can provide your monitor with a water area that they can comfortably soak in at the least. 
They need this in case the humidity gets too low or if the temperatures rise to an area where they're not comfortable so they can get in the water and cool off. They'll swim around flicking their tongues and it's something to watch, that's for sure. They don't require water or Nile monitor type ponds, but they do like to swim. So give them that opportunity and it'll be something amazing. Let's talk about the basking site. This one's short and simple. This one's up to you, honestly. You'll want a basking site that your animal can preferably get its whole body on and get warm under the basking lights. I prefer to use a slate or a sandstone, pieces of rock. As it heats up, it holds heat. Um, you know, it heats up very, very fast. A large log can work as well. Just make sure you get to the correct basking temperatures where they need to be, and it really won't matter what you use. So now let's go ahead and talk about enrichment. Monitor lizards are the smartest lizards on the planet. Yes, I am aware tegus exist, and they are just as smart, or arguably even smarter, and I do love tegus, but this is a monitor video, so monitors are going to get the edge. If you don't give your monitor enrichment, just like other intelligent animals, even people, it'll get bored. This boredom can lead to mood swings, as well as them stopping at nothing as they try to bust out of their enclosure. You need things that are sturdy, such as big rocks, logs, and deep substrate, uh, even some sturdy dog toys that they can push around. Creating a naturalistic enclosure helps with this, as does constantly changing up the setup, which I recommend. Virtually anything you plant will be uprooted unless it's a large woody tree, so if you include plants, prepare to have them uprooted before you can leave the room. Let's talk about hides. I get a lot of questions about this, so let's go ahead and dive into it. I personally have only ever kept my Argus monitor with one hide as a young neonate. It helps with socialization, as you don't want them hiding all the time. Ideally though, you should give them something that they can squeeze under but cannot hurt them. Make sure all heavy items are anchored to the bottom and they cannot dig under them. If you have maybe a waterproof piece of plywood, that'll work for them to dig under and get to that moist substrate underneath the dry layer. If you have a really heavy object, do not place it on top of substrate that they can dig under because there's a risk that they can dig under that you know heavy object and then end up crushing themselves which is something every monitor keeper fears and we don't want to happen so it's super preventable all you have to do is just put that heavy item on the bottom of the enclosure and put substrate around it now feeding is the part that we've all been waiting for and probably the reason that you're so interested in these animals other than maybe the fact that they stand on two legs which is called tripoding and i'm actually teaching my argus to do it on command so stay tuned for those videos coming out when feeding an Argus monitor, whole prey is going to be best. There are different opinions on this. Some say that only whole prey is overrated, but I believe that the whole animal prey is best as it packs all the needed nutrients. Whole prey is basically just what it says. It's the whole animal. It can be in the form of chicks, rodents, insects, or other whole animals. I'm gonna say it now. I do not feed live with the exception of insects. There is absolutely no need to feed an Argus monitor live food. Their appetite is absolutely insane enough that they will eat anything, which is why it's important to give them the right food. Feeding live will trigger a feeding response that is built on movement and not on target training or another method of training. Live feeding also introduces an added risk of your animal getting injured as the prey tries to fight back. So just go ahead and stay off live feeding for Argus monitors. We'll talk more about this later. Back to feeding. So in the wild, Argus monitors are primarily going to be predators and scavengers that feed on whole animals. This includes the bones, muscle, organ meat, fur, feathers, nails, eyeballs, and whatever else is in the body of an animal. They need the nutrients from all of these things to have good health. And they need the whole calcium from the bones as well to maintain healthy bones of their own. While I do recommend whole prey as the main part of their diet, that does not mean that other things cannot be fed too. Things like chicken hearts and gizzards, fillets of fish, occasionally some beef and even chicken drumsticks, as well as many other forms of lean protein can be a great supplemental food source. I've seen many people raise monitors on only whole prey, and I've seen people raise them mostly on chicken parts with supplemental vitamins and calcium. I recommend a healthy mix of both, but a heavier usage of whole prey, mainly rats and chicks. The feathers and the fur in these prey items will also keep your monitor's stool more uniform. Monitor poop is usually sort of soft serve ice cream consistency anyway, so this is one area that whole prey helps in. It'll be easier to clean up their poop. One thing to mention is that feeding raw foods does pose the same risk of salmonella to your monitor as it does to humans. It's very rare that Argus monitors get salmonella from something like raw chicken, but it can happen. And one way to prevent that is to lightly cook your Argus monitor's food before you give it to them. But the biggest thing that you can do to help prevent this is to have a hot, nice, proper basking spot. That will enable your Argus monitor to basically cook the food with the heat and their fast metabolism. If your Argus can't get hot enough basking temps, the food may rot inside of its stomach. This is also why I recommend feeding in the morning over the evening when it's possible, or whenever your lights come on. 
This will give them the entire day to digest their meal, so there's nothing sitting in their stomach when night comes. This also applies to eggs. Eggs can be a great addition to any Argus monitor's diet, but egg whites contain a protein that stops the synthesizing of a certain vitamin in their body. Cooking the eggs slightly will neutralize that protein and they'll be good to go. I feed my Argus monitor mostly whole rats, whole chicks, and whole fish. Remember, variety in your Argus monitor's diet is key. Do not feed them the same food over and over. Would you want to eat the same food every day for the rest of your life? I don't think so. Here is a list of everything I've given my Argus monitor. I've given him all these items from time to time, so he's always getting different stuff. So I'm going to tell you guys the different items that work for me when feeding my Argus monitor. You ready? So, rats, chicks, whole minnows, whole larger fish, eggs, slightly raw and scrambled, as well as hard boiled, crickets, grasshoppers, superworms, dubia roaches, snails, crushed snail shell, shrimp, whole and gutted, frog legs, fiddler crabs, and every once in a while some ground turkey or some ground beef. That's all I can remember off the top of my head. There's probably more if I look in the freezer. I didn't include things like chicken parts, chicken livers, chicken hearts, chicken necks, all that good stuff. All the foods I listed, when used in the right moderation, make a great Argus monitor diet. I would avoid mice as they're basically just bones, fat, and fur. Rats are going to be far more nutritious. This also works in conjunction with the UVB. If you feed whole prey, you will not need to use UVB. It may provide some benefits, but whole prey has all the vitamins and calcium in it. If you do not feed as much whole prey, the UVB is a must. It's good to use regardless. I actually have been doing more experiments, uh, taking it on and off my Argus monitor's enclosure. I haven't seen too much of a difference other than color like I said in the last video, but I am still doing the experiment. It has not been going on for that long. I just added UVB back today for him. But this is just the research I've conducted and found while talking to other veteran keepers as well as some observations I've made myself. Let's talk about wild caught foods. This is again a controversial subject, but what part of keeping monitors isn't controversial? I mean, come on. So I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. Should you go out into nature and pick up some bugs or other animals and feed them to your Argus monitor or any captive reptile? No, absolutely not. There is a risk of parasites in all animals, especially wild ones. So if the animals that you pick up outside have parasites, you feed them to your monitor, the parasites are gonna be passed down. But if you know of a clean area, free of pesticides, you can start a colony of something like a captive bred feeder insect for your animals. Just monitor the colony for any parasites or odd behaviors. Larger organisms like field mice, wild fish, or other things, again, if you know a clean source, not from somewhere like places with a lot of chemicals or something with standing stagnant water, I mean like a clean open field or a woodland or a pristine creek, then I would recommend freezing these prey items after you dispatch them for a month minimum to kill off any parasites that may be living in them. I actually do this myself as well as Mink Man when he had his Argus Monitor Raptor also did this. A variety of supplements will also be useful when feeding your Argus Monitor items that don't have bone or exoskeleton in them. So here's what I recommend. On hand at all times, I have a multivitamin, calcium with D3, and calcium without D3. But insects and other food will require a frequent dusting, especially when feeding young insect-loving monitors, which baby Argus monitors fall into that category. Also, make sure your insects are gut-loaded. Make sure you give the insects high-quality food one to two days before feeding them to your lizard. Keep them in humane conditions as well. Bad food equals bad health for your animal. Some claim that vitamin D3 can be toxic, but there isn't much evidence for that. I use it in moderation though, don't go too crazy with the D3, but it is beneficial when used in appropriate quantities. Last thing for feeding, which is unsurprisingly the longest part of this video, is target training. You must target train a monitor as athletic and large with as high of a food drive as an Argus monitor. I have some videos on target training that I'm doing with my Argus monitor, so check those out if you want, or comment down below if you have any questions. You want them to associate the target with food so that eventually the only thing that turns their feeding response on is them seeing that target. They catch on very, very quick. I learned this the hard way before I started target training. This was completely my fault and no fault of Blue. The video on that will be in the description when he kind of caught my finger. One more thing, do not power feed. Power feeding is when you stuff as much food into your young animal as possible to speed up their growth rate. This can shorten the animal's life considerably and can cause obesity and other problems in life. Just be patient or buy an adult. So most people would stop here in a care guide, but I want to go a little bit further than the conventional care guides out there. Let's talk about some health problems that you can encounter when you're keeping an Argus monitor. There are a couple of health problems that one may run into when keeping an Argus monitor, so I'm going to quickly go over just a few of them. The first one is fatty liver disease. 
This is one that's fairly common with Argus monitors, especially older males because of their voracious appetite. This is also common in savanna monitors, a large majority of savanna monitors honestly. This is when there is too much fat being ingested by your monitor and that fat is stored in the body, more specifically near the liver. This can be due to a lack of exercise and eating too many fatty items such as mice, superworms, and too many of one thing. Mice and superworms are not bad when given in moderation, but if you just pound them with those items or items with other fat, this is a problem that you may run into. Overfeeding is probably the biggest cause of this. A basic rule of thumb you can use to help you is that if your monitor's belly is dragging when he walks, it's too fat and you need to cut back on either the feeding frequency or the portion sizes. Argus monitors will eat until they die, so it's our job as keepers to keep them in check. Scale rot. This one gets overlooked, but it's caused by your Argus monitor constantly sitting on wet substrate. As mentioned in the last video, you need a dry humidity, and you need to give that soil a time to dry out. You need to give it an aeration period. Refer back to the substrate and humidity part of the video, or comment down below for more info. Scale rot is characterized by reddish brown patching, usually on the animal's underside, and the scales will appear cracked or rotten, as the name suggests. If caught early, it can be treated easily at home with a betadine solution, but serious cases will require medical attention, and it spreads very, very easily. So if you see a problem that's spreading too fast for you to control, please take your animal to a vet. The last one's not really a health problem, it's more of something to prevent health problems, but not giving them proper temperatures. We talked about it earlier, but your monitor needs proper basking spot temperatures, or it risks food not digesting and rotting in its stomach, which will cause the animal to die. This is where I hope that everyone is listening because no one ever talks about this when keeping large monitors and I really don't understand why it's not talked about more. It's something that really does need to be addressed and that is the risks of keeping an Argus monitor or any large monitor. This is something that no one talks about and it's arguably the most important part in deciding whether or whether to not get an Argus. So the first thing you have to realize, when you watch my videos, you may realize that Blue is fairly social for a young Argus and does not behave like most of the other ones that have a bad or hissy reputation. This is not because he's fat and cold like 99% of the other tame Arguses you may see. That's because of proper socialization. What you guys see is only what's on the screen. You don't see the culmination of the hours and hours a day it takes to get to this point with these animals. Again, I'm not an expert, and I'm not saying I or my lizard are anywhere close to where we want to be, and we're not perfect, I'm not some genius, I'm not some Argus monitor taming guru, but I am super proud of how far he's come, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for his socialization. And you know, as they say, the proof is in the pudding, man. I put the work in with this animal, and he's turning out beautifully. You have to realize that not every Argus monitor has the same personality. While Blue may have picked up on socialization cues faster than most other animals, Others may take a little bit longer. The most important thing you can do is to read your monitor's body language and respect it as much as you can. Again, I have a lot of videos on this topic as well as socialization, which if you haven't picked up on it, is a must for your Argus monitor. So I'm not gonna go into socialization that deep. There's, I got a bunch of videos on it. You may have saw what happened when my young, young animal barely grazed me on accident with the side of his tooth. My finger was ripped open to the muscle and I will have a scar on there for the rest of my life. As a, a full grown large Argus monitor can do significantly more damage. Their teeth are huge and their rays are sharp and they're backwards hooked so that prey cannot escape. And they're sharper than razor blades. If you get bit by a full grown Argus monitor, you will no doubt be going to the ER for stitches or worse. With the pure power these animals possess, it would not surprise me if they could take off a finger with ease. Judging by what they can do to large, thick rats, even at their strong size. This is not an animal that's suitable to be around dogs, cats, or small children at any point without supervision from the keeper and at a safe distance from the child or another animal. I wouldn't recommend putting your Argus monitor in the same room as any other small animal unsupervised at all, to be honest. Make sure that those animals have no shot at being able to interact with each other. I'm going to finish with this. If your Argus monitor looks pissed, don't grab it. Use your common sense. Don't mess with it because that's how you get bit. And that bite is something that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. Back up, give it space, and approach it calmly. I'm not a magician. The more I look, the more I see others breaking that stereotype that Argus monitors are some untamable beasts. It can be done, but you must consider the risks and the implications of a bite, and be willing to spend a good portion of your week sitting in awkward positions in or around a lizard cage. When properly socialized, these are inquisitive, sweet, and honestly pretty cute lizards. So that about wraps it up, man. Everything I know, 
and have learned about Argus monitors over the years. That's all my knowledge right there. About 10,000 words on this script, years of knowledge that you are going to get to absorb in however long these videos were. I wish I had this video before I got blue. Not that I've had any problems with them, it's just imperative you know exactly what you're getting into before you hop into an animal like this. I want to say thanks again for 500 subscribers, it's just absolutely mind blowing. I also want to thank everyone who I have ever asked questions to about these animals. Thanks to Jim Miller for always being there to answer any questions I may have about Argus monitors. Shout out to anyone else who I may have asked and has been able to help me through this journey. And again, I would not be here without you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit that notification bell and the like button. This took an insane amount of work, but I'm super dedicated to making sure these amazing animals have the care that they deserve and that the amazing people that own them, which are you guys, have the knowledge that they need and are properly equipped to handle these velociraptors. Comment below if you have any more questions and please share this video. I appreciate you guys so much. I love you guys and I will see you in the next video.